Now, across Texas, the issue is. I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas. I'm Greg Krugin in Houston. And I'm Rudy Koski in Austin. This is Texas, the issue is. A fourth special session ends with no teacher pay increases, no new school funding, and no school vouchers is what Governor Greg Abbott wanted. I talked to Texas House Democrat James Tallarico, who is a former teacher, about if this was a win for the Democratic Party or for Texans. It's not about school choice. In fact, it's the school's choice because the school can deny admission to any kid they want. It's not about educational freedom because most kids aren't going to have access to it. And it's not about parental rights because parents give up rights when they go to a private school. That's why I call this a scam. You mentioned unpopular when it comes to vouchers or uh, education freedom is what the governor is calling it. A lot of polls have showed that people polled supported Republicans and Democrats. So why do you think a majority in the House, just the House, not Senate, is opposed to this? Some of these wealthy special interests that are pushing voucher scams have funded their own polls, which ask people a generic question like, do you support school choice? You know, you're going to get a lot of people who say yes to that question. I also support school choice. We have school choice here in the state of Texas. We have public charter schools. We have magnets. We have early college high schools. We have all kinds of school choice. But when you ask Texans, do they support taking taxpayer dollars out of public schools and sending them to unaccountable private schools for the wealthy few, the overwhelming majority say they don't support that. The leadership at the top has been an absolute failure of the people of Texas. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick blamed House Speaker Dade Phelan for what he called dysfunction in the legislature when it comes to education funding, school vouchers, and other issues. This guy's just flat out impossible to work with. Don't want to answer a phone call, want to answer a text. Do you think the speaker is the problem in this education fight? There is only one culprit in this education fight, and that is the governor of this state. It's not the House's fault. It's not the Senate's fault. The reason we don't have any school funding after starting the year with a $33 billion budget surplus is because of Greg Abbott. He promised to veto any school funding that was brought to his desk if it didn't include this unpopular voucher scam. So he doomed it from the start. And, and I think Texans of all political parties need to call the governor and tell him to finally support funding for our neighborhood public schools. Do you agree that the, the social media trash talking should end and both men should get in a room and make a deal and see what happens? This is a fight between the people of this state who want to fully fund public education and a governor who doesn't believe in public schools. That, that is the central problem here. There's, there's infighting between the House and the Senate, that's for sure. But the primary problem is that the governor doesn't want to fully fund our public schools and instead wants to send our tax dollars to unaccountable private schools. And by tying those two things together, he sabotaged funding for our public schools. That's what the voters of this state need to understand clearly. Do you think anything will change in a fifth session as it pertains to education? There's nothing conservative about starting a, a new entitlement that's going to balloon in future years. There's nothing conservative about giving our tax dollars to unaccountable private institutions that don't have to follow any rules. So I think there is a growing movement in this state, Republicans and Democrats, standing up to say, stop all this this political gamesmanship. Stop with these corrupt scams. Let's just fully fund our neighborhood schools that are going to benefit all of us. I know you guys have a lot to say. Right now, we're just going to do one word. Rudy Koski, what's your word? Oh, Stephen, there are so many words that apply from dysfunctional that you mentioned. Delusional, that's another. But I'll go with extracurricular. Okay, Greg Grugan, what about you? Stephen, my word is simple. Spin. The Fox Texas trio is back this week. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick basically threw Dave Phelan, the speaker, completely under the bus. Greg, is this all Dave Phelan's fault? Uh, Stephen, depends on your perspective and, and stay with me here. Let's roll the clock back a few months to the Paxton impeachment trial in the Senate, the outcome of which many observers believe was cooked by Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick from the get go. 
Now, by clearing the controversial attorney general, despite plenty of evidence of wrongdoing, and then absolutely trashing the Texas House in the process, Patrick brought himself, you know, plenty of hostility in the lower chamber. Did anyone really expect Phelan to roll over and go above and beyond to push through choice in his far less autocratic chamber? My point, imagine the much different level of cooperation which may have unfolded on vouchers had the Senate affirmed the House's overwhelming impeachment of Paxton instead of openly and very publicly condemning it. Rudy, the House has continued to say no on vouchers, so why should Governor Abbott keep pushing for it? He shouldn't keep on pushing unless he finally pushes a real school choice plan. I agree with uh, the representative. School choice is, is a broadly accepted kind of idea. It's just when you get into the details that things get messed up. And I think a limited option that initially helps people escaping failing schools in failing school districts, that could win passage. All the plans offered so far have essentially been rebooted white flight exit plans. Let's just call it what it is. That's what it is. That's the motivational. And that's why my word was extracurricular and also dysfunctional. Now, I agree, progressive social engineering, that's happening in our public school system, upsetting a lot of people by educators who believe that they know better than parents. That needs to change. School boards that have parents arrested for being upset about all that, speaking out, that needs to change. Yeah, everybody's on board with that, most I should say. I think many of those who voted against Governor Abbott's idea and team school choice, they want to focus on those problems first before allocating a new multi-million dollar government giveaway. Stephen? Public school funding and teacher pay raises is basically being held hostage by Governor Abbott. Greg, does Abbott have a better chance of getting what he wants if he allows standalone bills to pass? Well, hard to say, Stephen, but my guess would be no. To do so would signal capitulation and remove the consequence of bucking his signature request. I suspect the governor will wait and see how the Republican primary turns out and whether he can flip some of those rural no votes. In other words, I believe the governor is willing to play the long game here, and I think he has the time to do it. Rudy, do you agree? You know, uh, the long game does sound logical and all that, but I think that uh, he may charge the net uh, like in tennis, give it one more shot. The governor does have to do a lot of damage control. Uh, how? That's the big question. It's gonna, and, and going after fellow Republicans on a vendetta campaign uh, doesn't really help things out. Uh, before a special session five is called, maybe in January, I'm hearing as a possibility, the governor certainly has to get a lot of his choice ducks in a row. And that's gonna be very difficult because look, let's face it, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, he has thrown a grenade on the bridge that he burned to the house that he you know, just really torched. So Patrick indicated he'll have some support for teacher pay, but hey, he thinks that enough money has been given to public schools. Well, that's not gonna win votes because the fact is Texas certainly lags behind other states in funding public education. It's not like the state's bud, uh, busted the comptroller recently predicted Texas will likely avoid the anticipated recession and have about $18 billion in budget surplus. We got the money. Failing public schools, no matter how much the spend is done against school labor, that's going to be used against Abbott and Patrick in the upcoming elections, regardless, I think. You could put that on a bumper sticker, Rudy Koski. We got the money. All right, uh, Greg Grugan, Representative Talarico thinks something will change in this new session. Is he just being optimistic? I think he is being optimistic, and I have to call out Representative Tallarico on his claim that favorable school choice polling was funded by wealthy voucher supporters. The University of Houston Hobby School poll administered by Dr. Mark Jones reported a majority of Texans support a school choice option. Same goes for the University of Texas survey, and both polls found a majority of African Americans in our state calling for some kind of voucher program. So regardless of where you come down on this issue, you simply can't claim the support numbers are fabricated. And there's one more major assumption here made by the House member. That just by plugging lots more money into public schools and teacher pay, checks will automatically and significantly improve educational outcomes. All right, Rudy, one word answer. Who's hurt more in this, Phelan, Patrick, or Abbott? Everybody. All right, that's all the time we have. To see this episode or any of our other ones, go to our station's YouTube channels.
and keep this conversation going by hitting us up on social media. Next week, a sobering conversation with our state senior United States Senator John Cornyn. In the meantime, be sure to let us know what you think the issue is.